Hey, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Coding Zoo. Uh, if this is your first time joining, my name is Shane. I have my son Nicholas with me. Hello. And this is our 17th lesson on how to program an HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. In this lesson, we're going to cover, what are we covering? Tables? Yes. Tables, and we're going to cover how to create columns and rows, uh, how to create table headers, and how to create captions for a table. We are going to add a table to the task list page. Does that sound like fun, buddy? Yes. All right. You ready to get started? Yes. Okay. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to the Coding Zoo. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane. Uh, I've got my son Nicholas with me. Hello. And I've got my daughter Jai with me. Hi. So let's go ahead and get started, guys. You ready to start? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So if you should have a Coding Zoo folder on your desktop, let's go ahead and open that folder. Click on tasklist.html. I'm going to right click, uh, choose edit with Notepad. Going to do the same for my styles, CSS, go into the CSS folder, right click, left click on edit with notepad plus plus. All right, so let's go ahead and open up our web page in the browser. So I'm going to go back to the file system, going to tasklist.html. I'm going to double click or I can right click and choose open with Google Chrome. All right, so this is where we left off last time. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my code and we're going to add the we're going to add a table um, to the web page and this table is going to allow us to list different tasks so we had in our previous lessons we created a little form at the top of the page that form allows you to create task uh, and this table that we're going to add uh, to the web page now will allow you to show each of those tasks uh, in a row format, one after another, kind of a list. Um, so let's go to tasklist.html. Does that make sense, guys? You understand what we're doing? What's that, Jai? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So let's go down to the bottom here. And I'm going to go inside my main tag. Right after that div, I'm going to press enter and I'm going to add the table element. So less than T A B L E, greater than, and then I'm going to put the ending tag less than forward slash T A B L E, and then greater than. So go to the middle of that, press enter a couple of times, go back up using the arrow key, tab out. With the proper spacing so we've added a table tag now a table is made up of rows you guys know what a row is do you know jay yeah. yeah what is it you don't know how to explain you need some coffee <laughs> All right, so a row, basically you think of a row as a line going from left to right across the screen. It's a horizontal line. That's a row. Think of a column as if you divide your screen up vertically going up and down. So a column would be going up and down, right? So let's go ahead and add a row. So first you want to add a row and then you put columns in that row. So I'm going to add a row. So less than and TR for table row. And then greater than. And I'm going to put a closing tag. Less than forward slash TR greater than sign. I'm going to go down, tab out. <clears throat> so I have a table. And so I have a table and it has a row. 
I'm going to go ahead and add some columns to that row now. So less than TD for, for a column. less than forward slash td to end the element so that adds basically um, a row and a column to my table i'm going to click save i'm going to just going to type some text in here shane was here all right click save i'm going to go over to my styles css and i'm going to scroll down to the bottom And I'm going to add some type selectors, or element selectors. I'm going to find um, the table. And I'm also going to find the table column. And I am going to put a border around uh, the table and columns so you can actually see them. Um, so I have a type selector. It searches for a table and it searches for columns. And I'm going to add the border property we've used in previous lessons. B O R D E R colon space one pic pixel semicolon. Oh, sorry. Solid is yes. O L I D black semicolon. So I've added okay. So we have our table. Uh, column selector, TD selector. We've got a border, one pixel solid black. Uh, say, uh, we click save. Let's go back to our browser. Now we should see something show up down here. Click refresh. And we have the table here. It has one row and one column. There's a border around the column. There's a border around the table. So we want our table to basically have all the information for a given for a single task each row would be a single task. So if we look at our form up here, what kind of data are we saving into our list? We have a title, short description, notes. We have priority and category. So one, two, three, four, five. So I want to have five uh, different columns. So it'd be five columns per row, five columns per task, because I want to divide that data up. So I'm going to go back to my browser. I'm going to highlight the column, remember a TR is a row and TD is a column. So I'm going to highlight it, right click, choose copy, press enter, and I'm going to press control V or use a mouse and, and paste it. I want to have, I want to have five of these. So I'm going to do, I've got two, enter, control V, three, four, five. Okay. So now I have a table, a row and five columns. Click save, should see the same thing on my screen. Click refresh, we have a table. There's one row, it's one line. I have one, two, three, four, five columns. So there we go, we have a table with five columns. Um, if I go ahead and copy this row, so I'm gonna highlight it, press control, press control. C for copy and go down to right after the end tag of TR, press control V to save it. I'm going to make two rows. Click save, go back to my browser, click refresh, and now I have two rows. So one of the things that's missing from my table here is I don't know, you know, I have Shane was here in each of these columns and I don't know what each of these columns are supposed to represent. So we can fix that by adding a table header. So I'm going to go ahead and add a table header. So go to your table tag there, um, press enter and table header T, excuse me, tab out table header T H. So less than T H greater than, and then a closing tag, less than forward slash th, greater than. Press enter. And I almost forgot to put a row for my table headers. So go above the th, put a less than, put in table row. I want to have one row that's my header. 
TR great, um, greater than. I'm going to highlight the TH and tab it out to get proper spacing. Go down one more. Go back. So uh, we have TR, TH, and ending TH. And then I'm going to put the ending TR tag uh, less than forward slash TR greater than sign. Um, we just got a visitor outside today. We have somebody mowing someone's lawn. So uh, unfortunately, uh, you may hear that in the background. I, I hope not. Um, I'll be sure to try to, to uh, filter it out some. All right, so I have a new row. It's got a table header tag. And of course, there's five columns, so I need five headers. So I'm going to cut and paste. Um, I am going to cut and paste the table header. So the table header is basically a header for each column. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. All right. Click Save. And I need to put some text in here. So I'm going to go back. My first three columns are title, short description, and notes. So I'm going to go ahead and go here to the first column header. Type in title. Type in Next one, short description. Go to the next one, notes. Let's go back to my form, and I have priority and category. So the next one, priority. And let's go to the next one, category. Okay, click save, go back to my browser, click refresh, and there we go. We have title, short description, notes, priority, and category. Um, now you'll notice it kind of looks a little weird there. Um, let me go ahead and put a border around the table headers. Let's do that, and let's make this um, description and of the, the title header, let's make it kind of uh, float to the left over here, just like our um, text is doing in the column. So let's go back, let's go to our CSS. So I'm gonna add, uh, we wanna add a border first to our table header. So I'm gonna put comma, TH, go ahead and use the same selector um, that we use for table and TD. And we added a border to that. Um, Let's go ahead and make the uh, text align um, in our header. Let's make it align to the left. So I'm going to put a selector to find all the table headers, only the table headers. So table header space squiggly bracket, closing squiggly bracket. That's a tongue twister there. Squiggly bracket, squiggly bracket, squiggly bracket. Ooh, that's tough. All right, type in. This CSS property is called text-align. So it's a new CSS property, text-align, colon, left, L-E-F-T, semicolon. So we've got a table header type selector with a CSS property, text-align, colon, L-E-F-T, semicolon. Okay, we clicked save. Let's go back to our browser, click refresh, and there we go. So our column headers are aligned to the left, the text is on the left side, and we now have a border around it. Now, one thing I don't like about this border is it's kind of, it's got, you know, it's got a border around the table, and each column it has its own, each little cell in this table. A cell is basically uh, where a column and a row uh, can, you know, intersect. This is a cell. This is a cell. This is a cell. Well, they all have their own borders, so so it doubles up on the borders. Let's go ahead and fix that. So go back to your CSS, and let's go down to here, and let's type in b o r d e r. So this CSS property is called border collapse dash. C-O-L-L-A-P-S-E, border collapse, colon, 
and we want it to collapse. C O L L A P S E semicolon. Click save. Wait for my kids to catch up. Go to my browser. Click refresh. And there we go. Now we only have one line border instead of the two double the double border. Okay. So the spacing is kind of off here, right? There's no padding. Everything's kind of scrunched up, right? Um, let's go ahead and change, fix that. So I'm going to go over here to um, my CSS again. Okay, in my CSS, I'm going to add, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and use a selector to select uh, the header um, and the column all at once and we'll change this to select both um, that way you can get the align property for your columns and your headers so I'm going to add TD um, and we're going to go ahead and add some um, padding so P A D D I N G colon I'm going to do 10 pixels space 10 pixels semicolon so click save. The padding is something we've done a lot of, so hopefully uh, you guys remember how to do that and what it does. Go back to my browser, click refresh, and there we go, nice, nice spacing now. It's all spaced out, great. Okay, so one thing uh, I don't like about this is um, it's kind of the table is kind of scrunched up to the side here. Um, so we probably need to put some space around this table. Uh, the cells have nice padding inside, but now we need a space around this table to kind of push it out away from, from everything else. How do you, what's use what CSS properties you should put in space outside of something, Jai? Margin. margin, that's right. So let's go ahead and set the margin. And we're also going to make this table a little bigger. Uh, what do you think would make this table wider, Jai? Do you know? Width. Remember with, yeah. with. Okay, awesome. Let's go back. She goes, "Why me? How come Nicholas doesn't get some of the questions?" That's a good point. We'll ask Nick, Nicholas questions in the next video. He's like, "No." Okay, so let's go to here, and I'm gonna add a selector just for the table. Table squiggly bracket, and I'm gonna quit saying squiggly bracket. By now, everyone should know what a squiggly bracket is. So tables, so this is a type selector for a table. Uh, and I'm gonna go with W-I-D-T-H colon, and let's do 75% to a percentage. That way it kind of expands with the size of your browser. And almost forgot my semicolon, press semicolon, save. And I wanted to put um, some Spacing on the outside of the table, and I already forgot what my daughter Jai said was used for that. Hey, Nicholas, what is used for spacing on the outside of your table? Margin. Margin. Good job. All right. M A R G I N colon, and I'm gonna put. Uh, what do you think? Maybe ten pixels. And we like the ten pixels. All right. One zero p x semicolon. Click save. Go back to the browser, and we should say this. See this table move over and down some, and okay, so it actually moved over some, which is great. Looks a little bit better, and the table got wider, so we can put more information in here. Okay, so this is the beginning of our table. Uh, we're going to add some more styling to this in our next lesson, and then probably that uh, the lesson after that, we're gonna we're gonna get into a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, so what we're going to do is, is instead of having this fake data in these rows, we're going to allow you to write some JavaScript that when you enter data into this form and press add text, it's going to add a new row to um, this table. So you're going to be able to add new tasks to your table by entering them in the form and pre pressing add task. And that way you can just keep adding more and more tasks to your task list. Okay, we're gonna do one final um, one final task here, and that'll be the end of today's lesson. Let's go back to our task list.html here. And I wanna add a title to the top of that table. So I'm gonna to go to the, I'm going to the table tag. And 
right above the table row, I'm going to tab out and type in the element caption. So less than C A. Oops, got it in caps. So less than C A P T I O N. And I can't type today. And I'm going to put Shane's task list. And then forward slash C A P T I O N. And I want this to be larger text. It's like a heading title, it's like a title. So I'm going to do H2. I'm going to wrap it in an H2 tag. So my beginning tag and my ending tag for H2. Okay. All right. So I have caption H2, Shane's task list in the H2 in the caption. Click save. Go back to my browser, click refresh, and there we go. So we have the table and it now has a title at the top of it. So that's it for today's lesson. We've learned how to create a uh, table with a caption uh, with column headers uh, and a table has rows and those rows are divided up into columns, separate columns. And we've also learned how to put the border on it and to make the border be, uh, be collapsed to a single line instead of multiple lines. So in our upcoming lessons, we're going to kind of make this table look a little bit prettier, kind of fix it up a little bit with CSS. And then we're going to get into uh, maybe the lesson after that using JavaScript for the first time. So with the JavaScript, we're going to take the data that you enter in this form. Once you enter data in this form and press add task, we're going to take that data and magically or rather with JavaScript dynamically add the data to a new row in this table. So as you add more tasks, more rows will be put on this table that have the input from your form uh, that, that gives data around the task. How's that sound guys? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, cool. So one of the things I wanted to comment on before you go is you know, you can create this form up here, the way things are divided up. You can do that with the table. You can actually use table instead of CSS to group these form elements. The reason we didn't do that is because that's kind of an old style of doing things. That's way before CSS became popular. And basically table tags should only be used for data that's specifically always in this kind of format, a data set, right? A list of data right? That's usually where, where you would use a table for. Um, you do not want to use it for formatting your elements on your HTML. Uh, HTML should not be for formatting, for look and feel. HTML should be just for having the data. CSS should be used for formatting and moving stuff around. Um, okay, so that's it for today. Thanks for joining us. Again, sorry if you hear the uh, lawnmower in the background. It's driving us nuts here. If if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click subscribe. If you like this video, click like. And if you don't like it, click dislike. Question for everyone. Leave an answer in the comments below and let's have a discussion. When do you think or how often do you think you would use the table tag? And are you clear on when you should use table versus CSS to uh, move your data around on the screen? So let me know if that's not clear. We'll have discussions about it in the comments. Also, leave a comment on how we can improve this video. Let us know what we did well, and let us know how we can make it better for you so you can learn how to program. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time. Bye.